ഓക്രതുണ്ടമഹാകായ സൂര്യകോട്ടിസമത്തഭം കുർമേജേവ സർവകാര്യേഷു സർവദാ സരസ്വതി നമസ്തുഭ്യം വരദേ കാമരൂപിണി വിദ്യാരംഭം കരഷ്യാമി സിദ്ധേർഭവത്മേ സദാ ഗുരവേ സർവലോകാനോഗിനേ സർവിദ്യാർത്തേ നമ ഈശ്വരോ ഗുരുരാജ്ഞേതി മൂർത്തിഭേദവിഭാഗിനേ വ്യാപ്തദേഹായ ദക്ഷിണാമൂർത്തയ നമ സദാ ശിവസമാരംഭം ശങ്കരാചാര്യമധ്യമാം അസ്മദാചാര്യപര്യന്താം വന്ദേ ഗുരുപരമ്പരാം ഗുരുർബ്രഹ്മ ഗുരുർവിഷ്ണു ഗുരുർദേവോ മഹേശ്വര ഗുരുസാക്ഷാത്പരം ബ്രഹ്മ തസ്മൈ ശ്രീ ഗുരവേ നമ സഹനാവതു സഹനോ ഘനക്തു സഹവീര്യം കരവാവഹൈ തേജസ്വിനാവധി തമസ്തമാഭിദ്വിഷാവഹൈ ഓശാന്തശാന്തശാന്തി Hello, can you hear me? Yes. Okay. Vasudevendra Yogedram Vasudevendra Yogedram Natva Jnana Pradam Gurum Natva Jnana Pradam Gurum മമുക്ഷൂണാം ഹിതാർത്ഥായ മമുക്ഷൂണാം ഹിതാർത്ഥായ തത്വബോധോ വിധീയതെ തത്വബോധോ വിധീയതെ സാധന ചതുഷ്ടയ സമ്പന്നാധികാരിണാം സാധന ചതുഷ്ടയ സമ്പന്നാധികാരിണാം മോക്ഷസാധനഭൂതം മോക്ഷസാധനഭൂതം തത്വവിവേകപ്രകാരം തത്വവിവേകപ്രകാരം വക്ഷ്യാമഹ വക്ഷ്യാമഹ സാധനചതുഷ്ടയം കിം സാധന ചേതുഷ്ടയം കിം നിത്യാനിത്യവസ്തു വിവേക നിത്യാനിത്യവിവേകവസ്തു വിവേക ഇഹ മുത്രാർത്ഥ ഫലഭോഗവിരാഗ ഇഹ മുത്രാർത്ഥ ഫലഭോഗവിരാഗ ശമാരി ഷട്ട സമ്പത്തി മുമുക്ഷുത്വം ചേതി മുമുക്ഷുത്വം ചേതി നിത്യാനിത്യവസ്തു വിവേക നിത്യാനിത്യവസ്തു വിവേക വിവേക നിത്യവസ്തു ഏകം ബ്രഹ്മ സദ്യതിരിക്തം സർവം അനിത്യം നിത്യവസ്തുവേകം ബ്രഹ്മ സദ്യതിരിക്തം സർവം അനിത്യം അയമേവ നിത്യാനിത്യവസ്തു വിവേക അയമേവ നിത്യാനിത്യവസ്തു വിവേക വിരാഗക വിരാഗക ഇഹസ്വർഗോധേഷു ഇച്ചാരാഹിത്യം ഇഹസ്വർഗോഗേഷു ഇച്ചാരാഹിത്യം ക്ഷമാതി ഷട്ട സമ്പത്തി 
ಸ್ವಧರ್ಮಾನುಷ್ಠಾನೇವ ಶ್ರೀತೋಷ್ಣಸುಖದುಖಾಷ್ಣುತ್ವಶ್ರೀದೃಶಿ ಗುರುವೇದಾಂತವಾಕ್ಯು ವಿಶ್ವಾಸ ಶ್ರದ್ಧಾ ಗುರುವೇದಾಂತವಾಕ್ಯು ವಿಶ್ವಾಸ ಶ್ರದ್ಧಾ ಓಕೆ ನಾವು ಯು ಕ್ಯಾನ್ ಮ್ಯೂಟ್ ಯುವರ್ ಮೈಕ್ ಆಲ್ ಆಫ್ ಯು ಕ್ಯಾನ್ ಹಿಯರ್ ಮೀ ರೈಟ್ ಐ ವಾಸ್ ಇಸ್ ಕ್ಲಿಯರ್ ಕ್ಲಿಯರ್ ಹಲೋ ಕ್ಲಿಯರ್ ಆಗ್ತಿದೆ ಯಾ ಯಸ್ ಯಸ್ Hello. Yes, it is clear. We put it on the mute. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, we can hear you. Yeah, yeah so it's okay. Um, it's fine. Yeah. But that's why I want to make sure whether my voice is clear. Fine. It's, okay. it's clear. Yes. Oh, fine. Shraddha Kedushi Guru Vedanta Vakyeshu Vishwasaha Shraddha In the last class, we saw what Shraddha is. Shraddha in Shraddha. guru and in the vedas we also discussed why shraddha is important why shraddha is important in the guru and in the shastra why shraddha is important in the guru and in the shastra you may ask is it not enough to have shraddha in the veda vedanta guru why should we have shraddha in the teaching of the guru i can learn shastram by myself after all shastram is a book i tell you never venture into such thing it is not only stupid but also dangerous we, we should never learn shastram by ourselves we all know this uh, mantra om pur namad pur namidam ಪೂರ್ಣಾತ್ಪೂರ್ಣಮೋದೇ ಪೂರ್ಣಸ್ಯ ಪೂರ್ಣಮಾದಾಯ ಪೂರ್ಣಮೇವಶಿಷ್ಯತೆ ದಸ್ ಇಸ್ ಅ ಶಾಂತಿ ಮಂತ್ರ ವೀನೋ ವಿ ಚಾನ್ ದಿಸ್ ಮಂತ್ರ ಅಟ್ ದಿ ಎಂಡ್ ಆಫ್ ಎವ್ರಿ ಕ್ಲಾಸ್ ಇಫ್ ಯು ಟ್ರಾನ್ಸ್ಲೇಟ್ ದಿಸ್ ವರ್ಡ್ಸ್ ಇನ್ ಟು ಇಂಗ್ಲಿಷ್ ಇಟ್ ವಿಲ್ ಬಿ ಲೈಕ್ ದಿಸ್ ಪೂರ್ಣ ಅದ ದಟ್ ಈಸ್ ಸೋಲ್ ಡಬ್ಲ್ಯು ಎಚ್ ಒ ಎಲ್ ಇ ಸೋಲ್ ಪೂರ್ಣ ಇದ ದಿಸ್ ಇಸ್ ಸೋಲ್ ಪೂರ್ಣಾತ್ ಪೂರ್ಣ ಅವಶಿ ಪೂರ್ಣ 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 ಆದಾಯ ಪೂರ್ಣ ಅವಶಿಷ್ಯತೆ ಫ್ರಮ್ ದಟ್ ಹೋಲ್ ದಿಸ್ ಹೋಲ್ ಹಸ್ ಕಮ್ ಇಫ್ ಯು ರಿಮೂವ್ ದಟ್ ಹೋಲ್ ಫ್ರಮ್ ದಿಸ್ ಹೋಲ್ ವಾಟ್ ರಿಮೈನ್ಸ್ ಇಸ್ ಓನ್ಲಿ ದ ಹೋಲ್ ಸೊ ದ ಟ್ರಾನ್ಸ್ಲೇಷನ್ ಇಸ್ ದಟ್ ಈಸ್ ಹೋಲ್ ದಿಸ್ ಇಸ್ ಹೋಲ್ ಫ್ರಮ್ ದಟ್ ಹೋಲ್ ದಿಸ್ ಹೋಲ್ ಹಸ್ ಕಮ್ ಇಫ್ ಯು ರಿಮೂವ್ ದಟ್ ಹೋಲ್ ಫ್ರಮ್ ದಿಸ್ ಹೋಲ್ ವಾಟ್ ರಿಮೈನ್ಸ್ ಇಸ್ ಓನ್ಲಿ ದ ಹೋಲ್ now you tell me what do you understand from this i think this is just a sentence which doesn't make any sense to me the meaning of the mantra cannot be known by just reading the translation of the mantra you need to be taught the meaning of the mantra this purnamadah this seems to be a simple mantra but it is not you need to be taught the meaning of the mantra 
in keeping with the tattarya of the vedanta who can do that only guru can do that therefore guru is important in the bhagavad gita we have a shloka those who attended the gita chanting they know this shloka nasato vidyate bhavah nabhavo vidyate satah ubhayorapi drishtontah ಸ್ವನಯೋಸ್ತ್ವದರ್ಶಿಸ್ಟ್ bhavaha it means existence abhavaha non existence so na asataha vidyate bhavaha non existent things have they have no existence na abhavaha vidyate bhavaha that which is existent existent has no non existence this truth is only known to the knowers of the truth this is the uh, translation of this gita verse now you tell me what you understand by this translation you can pick up a gita book by yourself and just read the translation you want to understand anything in fact you know where this shloka is this shloka it comes in the beginning itself second chapter 16th shloka itself krishna says uh, give this teaching to arjuna that teaching of uh, bhagwan krishna it starts on the 11th verse of the second chapter ashochyan anvashochastvam pragnyavadansya bhashase tatasu nagatasunscha nanu shochanti panditaha that is how it starts second chapter 11th shloka in the 16th shloka that is in the next immediate five verses later krishna gives his teaching nasato vidyate bhavah na bhavo vidyate satah to arjuna the meaning of this shloka is difficult to understand there is a upanishad with the name isha vasi upanishad probably you would have heard the name isha vasi upanishad it is a small upanishad but it's difficult one to understand probably it is the upanishad which is studied after studying mundaka katha all those upanishad you study and then you after even the itri upanishad after that you study isha vasi upanishad it's a small small upanishad but it's difficult to understand that upanishad it starts with isha vasya mitagum sarvai gatin chajat yam jagat iti that upanishad starts with isha vasya midam that was that upanishad itself is called isha vasya upanishad the meaning of the first line of the upanishad the mantra is says isha vasyam idam sarvam the this should be covered by ishvara ishvara is bhagavan what the whole universe should be covered by ishvara the whole jagat how do you cover the whole jagat can you prepare a huge blanket and cover it no that is not the meaning here so to understand one mantra of any upanishad or even the shloka of the gita gita is a smriti grantha upanishad or shruti so to understand one mantra of any upanishad or even the shloka of the gita you should know the vision of the soul as revealed by the, the vedanta shastram you require to have the whole vision to understand the mantra unless you know the mantra by mantra you cannot have the vision of the whole unless you know the whole you cannot understand the mantra so therefore this is a real catch 22 situation they it is like uh, saying uh, i tell you in tamil then i will say in english பைத்தியம் தெளியணும்னா கல்யாணம் பண்ணி வைக்கணும் ஆனால் கல்யாணம் பண்ணால் தான் பைத்தியம் தெளியும் தட் இஸ் த மேக்னஸ் ஆஃப் அ பர்சன் வில் வில் கோ வில் நாட் கோ அன்லெஸ் அ பர்சன் இஸ் மேரிட் 
unless the madness goes away marriage will not will, hap- will not happen to that person this is a <laughs> thing so it is a it's called it's called anyonya ashraya mutual dependence unless you know the whole you cannot understand the mantra unless you know mantra by mantra you can never understand the whole you can you can never understand the whole mantra by mantra therefore you cannot take up shastra like uh, any book and read like a novel you cannot do it you should go to your guru uh, who can unfold the vision of the shastra there is no other way in the brigavalli of the taitriya upanishad brigur vai varuni varunam pitaram upapitaram upapasara adhi bhagavo brahmeti tasma he tad provach annam pranam chakshashrotram mano vachamiti rahum ho vacha it goes like this brigu vai varuni jares varunas tan brigu he approaches father his father is the guru for for him so he went to his father and asked for this knowledge adhi hi bhagavo brahmeti adhi hi bhagavo brahma iti teach me brahman the son asked his father to teach brahman then the teaching of the father that the father gives the teaching that's how the whole upanishad the, that brahma brigavalli goes so that all gurum eva abhigachhe shrotriyam brahmanishtam mundoka upanishad samitpanihi shrotriyam brahmanishtam gurum eva abhigachhe shrotriyam brahmanishtam now how can i find out the right guru that is another question in the bhagavad gita the first chapter we know it's so it's, it's about it's about the 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 full chapter is uh, is about the arjuna's lamentation the first chapter is full of lamentations of arjuna arjuna he kept on lamenting and krishna was just listening to the lamentation of arjuna arjuna gave his own logic to withdraw from the war krishna did not give any teaching to arjuna at that time he was just uh, listening to arjuna he didn't stop arjuna from speaking arjuna was just listening because arjuna was in a mood to to let out his uh, you know anguish so arjuna the so krishna was just listening then in the second uh, chapter that uh, i think seventh shloka arpanyatosho upagata subhavah pracchami tvam dharma samhura chetah etchayam sya nischitam drugitanne shishyastegam shadhimam tvam prapannam this shloka is a turning point of the whole thing in fact this is the the root or the base for the gita teaching to come from bhagwan krishna here shishya stegam shadhimam tvam prapannam arjuna says shishya aham te shishya te te means tava yuspat shabda shakti bhakti aham te shishya i am your disciple mam shadi this shadi is a sanskrit shadi not a hindi shadi shadi means teach mam shadi teach me oh krishna i am your disciple i have sir i surrender myself to you please teach me krishna arjuna they were almost of the same age till the the sixth verse of the second chapter starting from the first chapter onwards right krishna and arjuna they are having the relationship of a friend for arjuna krishna is a friend and also is a driver the one who drives the chariot chariot now up to the sixth verse of the second chapter this was the relationship after the seventh verse when arjuna surrendered to krishna the whole the, the, the whole that there's a there's a total uh, transformation in the relationship the transformation happens in arjuna and arjuna surrenders himself at the feet of uh, krishna and accepted and wanted him to accept as his disciple and asking for the teaching that's all go to your guru 
who is Shotriyam and Brahmanishta. Probably Arjuna knows that Krishna is, uh, is a Shotriyam and Brahmanishta. That is why he surrendered himself to Krishna and, and asked for the teaching. That is why the Shastram says, Gurum Eva Adhigachet, Shotriyam Brahmanishtam. You go to your Guru who is a Shotriya, who is a Brahmanishta. If not Brahmanishta, at least a Guru should be a Shotriya. Why Guru should be a Shotriya? Because the words of the Guru will be in keeping with the Shastra. The Guru will not give his own, uh, you know, mystical experience in the form of uh, words. No. There is no any additional contribution of the Guru. Guru cannot modify the truth of the Vedanta. The truth of Vedanta is what it is. You cannot uh, improve upon the truth. Guru cannot do it. So, if you don't get Brahmanistam, at least go to a Guru who is a Shrutriya. Shrutriya is very important. In the ashram, we have all have listened to Swamiji for the more than um, three and a half years, maybe four years. It, it means uh, every day we have Swamiji's class, two cla three classes a day. So you can imagine how many hours of teaching would have happened. That is only Swamiji's class. Our Acharya class is different. It means we have uh, exposed to the, the Shastra for more than, and the teaching of the Guru, Swamiji, for more than thousand hours of teaching. It has happened. So, I may not be a Brahman Rishta, but Shrutriya. Coming in that parampara, coming in that tradition, Shrutriya. So that is uh, the the that is what is important. A person should be a at least should be a Shrutriya. That is why Mudra Kapanishad says Shrutriya Brahmanista. If you get a Shrutriya and who is also a Brahmanista, it is fine. That is very good. You are the most fortunate person. But if not, if you don't get a Brahmanista, at least if you get a Shrutriya, that will uh, do the job. Now, you can ask, how, how did the Guru know the whole, the Purnam, the, the Truth, the Vastu, the Atma, Brahmatma? The Guru should have been taught by his Guru. His Guru by his Guru. His Guru by his Guru. His Guru by his Guru. It, so, it goes on and on. Finally, if you pray, the teaching is coming from Dakshinamurti himself, Ishwara. So, it is not that the, uh, you know, that it is the Guru's own teaching. No Guru can take the credit for the teaching because a Guru is just a, a pipeline in the tradition. It is a, just a, a conduit of knowledge. A Guru is the one who operates a Pramanam. Therefore, Guru is important. The Guru has to operate the Pramanam and unfold the Tattvarya of the Veda, Vedanta. Therefore, Guru is important. He has the key to unlock the words of the scripture. Therefore, Guru is important. If Guru is important, then the faith in Guru is much important. In the previous class, I, I told, Shastram is a Pramanam. There should not be any doubt in, in understanding that Shastram is a Pramanam for knowing the Vastu, the Atma, Brahmatma. And the Guru who can who comes in the Sampradaya, who can unfold the teaching, you must have faith in that Guru. So, this Guru and the, and the Vedanta, the teaching of the Vedanta and in the words of the Guru, that Shraddha, that faith is important. Now, how to develop or how to acquire this Shraddha in Guru and the Vedanta, what should we do for that? You leave Vedanta. How do you get Shraddha in anything or in or in anyone for that matter? Suppose you are standing in a bus stop. Somebody comes and asks you, ask for 100 rupees. Will you give? You will not give because you don't know who is that person. And you and therefore you don't know when that person will return back the money. Suppose if it is your friend with whom you have a long association. Suppose if he comes and asks you money, even you will give you thousand rupees without uh, thinking, without any uh, any uh, documents you will give him, because you have faith. 
how did you develop faith because of your long association with that person you know that person therefore you give him the help what he needs so the shraddha cannot be logically established you cannot establish the shraddha by any logical analysis no shraddha is gained or gathered by association with a person the more is association with the person the more is a faith in that person so in the same way the faith in the veda or the vedanta cannot be established logically it has to be gained through the long association with the veda and the vedic life and the life which is prescribed by the vedas that is why in our tradition everything begins with the vedic mantra vedic uh, samskaras are there jata karma with vedic mantras namakranam also with vedic mantras even when you start going to school you begin a, you go to school with a before going to school you do a ritual called akshara adhyasa that is also a samskara you do that so any samskara you do it has a basis in the veda and veda means vedic veda mantras are there veda gosha is there. in every uh, function celebration veda gosha will be there if a person has taken to the study of vedas he does veda adhyayanam for 12 long years constantly 12 long years is the time period prescribed for the in the veda adhyayanam so as i hear vedas more and more what happens my respect and my faith begins to increase and veda prescribes a particular way of life and if i live that way of life i find that the veda really blesses me so i get shraddha in what the veda says like uh, the shraddha what i have in my friend so therefore this uh, this the vedic way of life is to be led so when you discover the vedic life is beneficial why is how do you get that faith that vedic life uh, is very way of life uh, is beneficial because it keeps me disciplined it keeps me alert it gives me peace it gives me a contentment that creates more shraddha in the veda vedas in we know the vedas is divided into karma kanda and gnana kanda karma kanda it talks about laukika vishaya even in the laukika vishaya the vedic wisdom works when the vedic wisdom works in laukika vishaya that we accept say for example we do kariri yaga kariri yaga why do we do i want rain therefore i do kariri yagna i want a putra a son therefore i do putra kamishti yagna so a particular means is prescribed for the particular end so in the same way in the vedanta which talks about the apurusheya vishaya but that also veda is a pramana vedanta that is the last portion of the veda veda vedanta is a pramana so if the laukika in the in the in this in the sphere of laukika vishaya is the vedic wisdom works therefore the apurusheya vishaya also it should work so the only way to get shraddha is what you have to get associated with the the vedas and the vedic way of life ye brahmachari we he does samita dhanam he supposed to do samita dhanam in the morning and in the evening and if you see the samita dhanam uh, procedure he says at the end shraddha meda mesha pragyam vidyam buddhim shyam balam ayushyam teja arogyam egime hovya bhagana this is a prayer which is uh, incorporated as a part of the the samita dhanam ritual so shraddha meda shraddha give me shraddha let me have shraddha so when a person from the from the brahmachari lifestyle itself when he starts praying praying like this that's why the person will have shraddha so what vedanta says it can be understood logically and therefore one can get shraddha by seeing this this fact i'll give another example this uh, drik drishya viveka drik means seer drishya is what is seen so seer seen discrimination drik drishya viveka drik drishya viveka it it points out that 
I am not only what I see. That is true. I see the body and therefore I cannot only be the body. I, if I take myself to be, to be the body, then it is erroneous knowledge. Vedanta says, I am not only the body, I am not only the mind, I am not only the sense organs. It is logical. And uh, we have established this in the previous class, if you remember. So, one thing about self-knowledge revealed by Vedanta is that it can be gained right now, here. And therefore, Shraddha is needed. Shraddha is not blind, but it is a, a temporary pending discovery, a pending understanding, Shraddha. The more we understand the nature of Pramanam and Vedanta as an exclusive means of knowledge for knowing Atma, for gaining Atma Jnanam, the more easier will be to get Shraddha. So, Guru Vedanta Vakyeshu Vishwasaka Shraddha. Okay. Now comes the next qualification. The disciple asks the Guru. Now we can... Uh, Stand with me. Samadhanam kim. Samadhanam kim. Guru says, Chittai ka grata. 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 Okay, you can uh, use your mic. So, Samadhanam, this is the sixth, uh, sixth of the Shatka Sampatti. Shatka Sampatti, that is, uh, 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 that is six fold Sampatti, that group of six qualifications, that Samadhanam is the one qualification, and that is the last qualification in that. Samadhanam, Kim, what is Samadhanam? Samadhanam is, it is having only one thing at a time. It's having only one thing at a time in front of the mind, right? The Samadhanam is not the Tamil Samadhanam. In, in Tamil we say Samadhanam, that is uh, appeasement, a peaceful settlement. No, that is not the Samadhanam here. Samadhanam is defined as Ekagrata. Ekagrata is one-pointedness. One-pointedness of what? Of Chitta, mind. Ekam Agre Yasya Saha. Tasya Bhavaha Ekagrata. Ekagrata is an abstract noun. Agre means in front, right in front of you. Agre. Agre, that is only one thing. Eka, that is Ekagra. Ekagra. So, the meaning of Samadhanam is, is the status of your mind. It is the status of your mind, Chitta. Focusing on only one thing at a time. That Ekagrata is Samadhanam. And this Samadhanam, it's an, it, that it's an accomplishment. It's not a simple thing. It's a big accomplishment. To keep the mind in a particular track of thinking for a length of time, that, it's, that is an accomplishment. It's a great accomplishment. Because the mind constantly moves. So Chitta Ekagrata is the capacity to bring back the mind to the, the topic. The nature of the mind is to wander, it's to move. In fact, it has got to, it has got to move. Then only you can know things. But the problem is, the mind can not only move, but it move away from the, the chosen topic, chosen object. Therefore, you should have the capacity to bring it back. That is called Samadhanam. So, Samadhanam is the capacity of the mind to observe itself in a given pursuit for a length of time. That length of time is important. For a length of time, you should be able to apply the mind. That application towards a, the particular object or a particular topic which you want to understand, that, that is called Samadhanam. There is only one thing that is in front of the mind at a given time. If, suppose if I read a newspaper, then Ekam, the newspaper alone is in front of my mind. If I am listening to somebody, so in front of mind, the only thing what is there is the other person is saying. There is no office, no children, no house, nothing should be there in the mind. But we often uh, say, uh, what did you say? Sorry, excuse me, beg your pardon. I didn't hear what you say. Can you please repeat? 
So it all shows that it's a lack of samadhana. If it is due to lack of hearing capacity, that is different, that we can understand. But if it is due to the mind slipping off, it is lack of samadhanam. No one, no, 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 nobody can complain about concentration. Nobody can say that I don't have concentration. Everybody has concentration. It is a, a question of discovering a particular interest for a topic. You have to discover, you have to discover that. Any topic, say Sanskrit. So once you get involved in Sanskrit, you begin to understand it properly. You enjoy it. Your, once you enjoy, your concentration also increases. So no one, therefore, no one can say, I don't have concentration. It is uh, our common experience that when we chant a particular mantra, when you do mantra japa, when you chant a particular mantra, our mind, it goes away, it wanders all over. It is the nature of the mind to go all over. The mind should not be stagnant. Otherwise, you, would, you won't be able to know anything. The thought frame must be momentary. Because, you, you, otherwise you can't see the motion. Therefore, it has to be momentary, like a, a movie. The mind goes on taking pictures, that is how the mind works. It has to move. The mind nature is to move. Then only you can know the things. But then, it, the, what happens is the mind moves away from the given topic. The mind moves away from the japa. Therefore, you should have the capacity to bring back it. That is, that is the samadhana. In the Bhagavad Gita, uh, Krishna says, Chanchalam hi manat Krishna. In the Bhagavad Gita, Arjuna says, Krishna, Chanchalam hi manat Krishna. The nature of the mind is what? Chanchalam. It does. It keeps on moving. So, when I am repeating a mantra, mentally, so my mind, mind it moves away from what I am repeating. So, what should I do? I should bring back the mind to what I am doing. So, my mantra. That is the, the meditation. In fact, the, the definition of meditation is to bring back the mind to what you are doing. That is what the meditation is. So, you cannot complain anymore that you cannot meditate. Bringing back the mind to the object on which you are dwelling is, is the definition of meditation. So, therefore, nobody can really complain, my mind moves away. No. Bring it back. Bringing, bringing it back is meditation. Moving away is natural. But if you don't bring it back, then there is no meditation. So, you should consciously attempt to bring it back to the object of meditation. That is meditation. So, whenever it moves away, bring it back. That is the advice given by Krishna, even in the Gita. Yato yato nishcharati tatastato niyamya etat. Niyamya etat. Niyamya. That is, you have, you should have should bring it back. Yata, yato yato nishcharati. Whenever it wanders, you bring it back. That is the meditation. So, the capacity to bring it back is what is called Chitta Ekadrata Samadhanam. And also, the mind should be, it has, it has to be one-pointed, like uh, the thread, which, uh, that, which has to pass through the, the eye of a needle. If the thread is not together, then the thread will not pass through the, the eye of the needle. Therefore, the Samadhanam is this one-pointedness, this concentration. This Samadhanam is possible only when there is a certain contentment in you. When there is a certain contentment, discontentment, when there is a certain discontentment or disenchantment, then it's very difficult to keep the mind in a given track. So, we can define Samadhanam also as the contentment of the mind. Also, Samadhanam can be uh, defined as, can, can also be taken as a mind which, that is not interested in too many things or doing too many things at the same time. Trying to do too many things at the same time, it is common and uh, we say it is a multitasking. But it is uh, really speaking that multitasking is of no use. This is a particular kind of habit that is not helpful. In this pursuit, in the spiritual pursuit, it is not helpful. So we need to have samadhanam. Swamiji uh, says, too many ions in the fire is a problem. When there are too many things to do, then we need viveka and vairagya. 
that we have talked about. We, sh- we should have Viveka and Vairagya and decide what to do now. Give priority to what is to be done. So, a certain Chitta Samadhana is required. That is, that is the main, that is be the, so you have only one thing in front of the mind and you are, that is what you are seeking now. In the person, in the, in the, person, in the spiritual person, what is that? Moksha. That is the main, that should be the predominant occupation. All the other things, all the other purusharta should subserve the moksha purusharta. Vedanta Sara, it defines Samadhana beautifully. That in our context of uh, studying uh, scriptures, it says, Nidrihi tasya manasaha shravanado tad guna vishayecha samadhihi samadhanam. Nidrihi tasya manasaha shravanado tad tad anuguna vishayecha samadhihi samadhanam. That is, samadhanam is the concentration of the mind, concentration of the mind which is restrained. Concentration of the mind on what? On Shavanado, on hearing, on Shavanam, Mananam, Nididhyasanam, of the scriptural passages and doing things that are conducive to the spiritual person, that is the Samadhan, that is what the Vedanta Sara defines. Nigrihitasya Manasaha, Nigrihitasya Manasaha means that is a mind which is withdrawn, which is restrained from its other preoccupations and distractions, a, a, a poise, an abiding mind. That mind must be focused. And that focusing mind, it brings us samadhanam or samadhihi. Samadhihi means absorption. Samadhihi means absorption, concentration, one point in it, the same as samadhanam only. Samadhihi, samadhanam, they are not different. So, such a mind which has the Samadhanam, which should be focused on Shravanadhu. Shravanadhu means what? Shravanam, Mananam, Nididhyasam. When the class is going on, now, the mind is able to expose itself to the teaching. It doesn't get dissipated, it doesn't get distracted by anything else. It should not get dissipated or distracted by anything else. Then only the effective Shravanam will take place, effective hearing will take place. A lot of our energy is is uh, is exhausted in uh, entertaining various thoughts, chasing after different artakama, reacting to the various situations and demands. So we are wasting our lot of energy in all these things. So the practice of samadhanam, what does it do? It helps us in conserving a lot of this mental energy so that it can be applied effecti- effectively to our spiritual pursuit. The Dhrudhana Upanishad, it says, Atmava are drashtavyaha, sotavyaha, mantavyaha, adivyasitavyaha. So, Atmava are drashtavyaha, Atma must be seen, must be seen means must be known. How, how, do, you, how do you know it? Right? Sotavyaha, mantavyaha, adivyasitavyaha. That is, we must, we must do an vichara, an inquiry into the Atma Swarupa. And the method of perform, performing that vichara is only through shravanam. Shravanam is listening to the, the scripture, scriptural teaching from the guru. And mananam is mananam is clarifying the doubts. Whenever the teacher gives a teaching, there may be there may doubts may occur. We compare with our experience and uh, com- with the uh, the teaching given by the teacher, and there may arise an doubt. So that is, that has to be clarified, that is Mananam. And Nididhyasana means assimilating the teaching, tackling all the Viparita Bhava, that is called Nididhyasana. We will talk about Stamanam Mananam Nididhyasana in detail, maybe in the later classes. So, so this is what the, the definition of uh, Samadhanam given by the Vedanta Sara, that is occupying our mind only with Shavanam, Mananam, Nididhyasanam. By which mind? Nigrihitasya Manaha. Shavanadu Tad Anuguna Vishaye Samadhi Samadhan. 
we may find that some additional preparations are also needed to listen to the scriptures. We may not be able to deliberate on Vedanta all the time because the mind needs a change, a certain distraction is required. The mind needs that. Or, uh, we may, or we find that we are not able to consistently maintain the, that frame of mind because certain qualifications like this Amanitam, Adambitam, Aginsa, Shanti, all these qualifications they are not fully developed. This means that mind has not acquired the maturity needed to apply itself totally to this, this pursuit of Atmajnana. Therefore, the Samadhanam it includes doing whatever is necessary to develop this qualification, this inner qualifications of humility and non-hurting, shanti, forgiveness, non-pretentiousness, amanitam, adambitam, all these values which uh, Krishna detailed in the 13th uh, chapter from the 8th shloka onwards. When, when shavanam or mananam, when we are not doing shavanam or mananam, so what is expected from a student is, a student is advised to observe his own mind, he should introspect, he should be alert to the various thoughts which comes in the mind and the reactions also. There may be some traces of arrogance, pride, jealousy, violence, so we need to slowly make ourselves free of all these, all these tendencies. The pursuit of this knowledge, Atvajnana, it includes not only Shamanam, Maranam, Nididhyasana, but also self-introspection. Also constantly we have to work to remove the obstacles that come in the way of our pursuit. All these things it comprises Samadhanam. Though Samadhanam means single-pointedness or the concentration of the mind, it, it, it doesn't mean that one has to withdraw from all the other activities. One does, need not give up or others one's activities. They are advised or the students are advised to perform activities in such a manner that all these actions should subserve the moksha purusharata. All the actions should become a means for jnana, atma jnana. That is why it is advised uh, even to introspect. If, if, they, if we don't have this amanitvadi qualities, we have to introspect and identify and develop those qualities deliberately. That is conducive for jnana. So, samadhanam it comprises everything. And through the, our daily performance of our karma, nitya karma, nimitya karma, all these activities, what do we see, what do we get? We, by performing all this activity, we tap the grace of Bhagavan, and Bhagavan's grace will, it will purify the mind. That is, all the ragasvesha, which is the impurification of the mind, that uh, slowly it will go away by the grace of the Bhagavan. That is also, this is also a part of the Samadhanam only. So, Samadhanam means what? Constantly maintaining the focus on our, on our pursuit. And you make choice and making choices that also will serve as a means for Atvajnana. That is Samadhanam. This Samadhanam which is defined by the, this Vedanta Sara, it's a beautiful, uh, it's a beautiful definition. That is why I, I, I gave, I elaborated on that uh, definition. Viveka Chudamani, it defines Samadhanam. It defines Samadhanam as Sarvara Sthapanam Buddhehe Shuddhe Brahmani Sarvatha Tat Samadhanam Ityuktam Natu Chittasya Lalanam That is uh, 26th verse in the Viveka Chudamani. Adishantracharya says, Samadhanam is placing, placing of the buddhi always and in every manner, sarvada, sarvata, in what? In Brahman, sarvada, sarvata, brahmani, tapanam, and Brahman is what? Shuddha Brahman, Shuddha and it is free from all limitations. It means the object of vichara, the enquiry of the buddhi, should be, should be only Brahman. Every other concern, it, it, you know, it finds resolution in this one committed inquiry, in this Moksha Purusharta. Nothing else has any value, any worth of one's concern and pursuit when it comes to Moksha. 
And Acharya says, Natu Chittasya Lalanam. It is not Chitta Lalanam. Chitta Lalanam is rocking of the mind. Like uh, when you cradle the baby, the cradle goes this side, that side. So, like that, the mind goes back and forth. Natu Chittasya Lalanam. In the mind, now it thinks of one thing and it thinks of another thing later. So, this has to go. This has to go means what Chitta Samadhanam should come. So, this qualification is very important. It's not only important for our spiritual pursuit, it is also important for our, our mundane pursuit also. The story of uh, this Arjuna in uh, Mahabharata, it is uh, something worth recounting here. So, I tell this story to my students in the school. They all get, uh, uh, you know, inspired by the story. Even I, I also, I mean, get sometimes inspiration from this story. It's a beautiful story. Probably you all know that. You know, this among all the Pandava and the Kauravas, this Arjuna is, he had keen interest for archery. He had great concentration and perseverance. So, because of his commitment, he became the, the you know, the star in uh, archery. Acharya Drona was very much uh, pleased with Arjuna. And uh, he showed love and favor towards Arjuna. Naturally, this caused a, a jealousy in the art of Duryodhana and his brother and his brothers. Though Dronacharya was a fair teacher, he could not help admiring Arjuna because he was a sincere student, a committed, a committed student, and a enthusiastic and a focused student. So one day, this Duryodhana he openly criticized uh, Dronacharya for showing favor towards Arjuna. So, Dronacharya, he wanted to uh, reply to that criticism, not by words, by a test. So, he tied a wooden bird on the top of a tree. Then he called all his disciples and said, Look, my children, a bird is sitting on the top of the tree. Now, you have to hit it. So, everybody nodded. Up, uh, then he called uh, Yudhishthira first. So, Yudhishthira came and he stretched his uh, bowstring and he was about to release the arrow. Then the Dronacharya asked him, Oh, um, oh Dharmaputra, oh, Yudhishthira, what is visible to you now? What do you see now? Then the Yudhishthira replied, Oh, Gurudeva, I am seeing you. I am seeing the tree. I am seeing the people around and also the bird. Then uh, Dronacharya asked him to leave. Uh, to leave the bow and go and call the uh, Duryodhana and he asked Duryodhana to aim the bird. When Duryodhana aimed the bird, Dronacharya stopped him and asked him, what do you see now? Duryodhana replied, I can see the sky, I can see the tree, I can see the leaves, fruits, birds. He gave a long list. Dronacharya asked him to leave the bow and go. Then he called uh, Bhima, Nakla, Sakharyava and others. They all replied the same way. Now, it was the turn of Arjuna. So, Dronacharya called him. He, he asked him to aim the bird. When Arjuna was ready, Dronacharya asked him, My dear Arjuna, what do you see now? Arjuna replied, O Gurudev, I can see only the bird, nothing else. Then, Dronacharya asked him to aim further. Then, he asked him, Arjuna, now what do you see? Now he said, O Gurudev, I can see only the eye of the bird and nothing else. When, when Arjuna replied, Dronacharya asked him to fire. And uh, you no, know, Arjuna released the arrow and it exactly pierced the eye of the bird. That this test, test itself shows how great the concentration of Arjuna was. Even the, uh, the, the Swayambara, which uh, Drupata arranged, he knows that only a person of such caliber like Arjuna, only Arjuna can hit that, that moving, uh, you know, fish. That he has to target, he has to hit the eye of the moving fish. Not looking at the fish, but looking at the, the image of the fish in the water. Who can do? Only Arjuna. So, Arjuna is uh, known for his uh, Chitta Samadhana. When he aims at a particular thing, everything else is not visible to him. That is the Samadhanam which a spiritual aspirant 
should have. Now, how to acquire the Samadhanam? This entire Yoga Shastra, this Yoga Shastra, it was written by Patanjali. Yoga Shastra is also known as Ashtanga Yoga. It is not a, uh, it's not Vedic, it is non-Vedic, written by Patanjali. In that Ashtanga Yoga, Patanjali, it talks of various practices. Ashta Anga, eight limbs. Yama, Niyama, Asana, Pranayama, Pratyahara, Dharana, Dhyana, Samadhi. So this, the whole Yoga Shastra is, is, it is meant for the concentration of the mind. It is meant for the disciplining the mind. It is not for Atta Jnana. We don't accept that Yoga Shastra for Atta Jnana. It is not for that. The last Anga of the Ashtanga Yoga is Samadhi. Samadhi which is, in a way, it is nothing but Chitta Samadhanam only. The Samadhi is that one point in this, that is the the absorption of the mind on a particular thing. That is what the one of the Anga in the Ashtanga Yoga of Patanjali Yoga Sutra also. That is a Samadhana. That is a Samadhana which a spiritual aspirant is required to have. And that is the last qualification in the Shatka Sampatthi, starting from Samadama Uparatthi, Titiksha, Shraddha, Samadhanam. Now comes the, the next qualification, which is the fourth qualification in the, the Sadhana Chatushtaya, Sadhana Chatushtaya. What is that? Mumukshutva. The details of this uh, fourth qualification we discussed in the beginning introduction itself, but we will discuss uh, more on this in the next class. Hare Om Om Purnamada Purnamidam Purnar Purnamudachate Purnasya Purnamadaya Purnameva Vashishate Om Shanti 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 Hare Om Shri Guru Pyo Namaha Hare Om Hare Om Thank you, Jake. Thank you. Thank you.